Hey, this week I'm bros, Bibles, and beer. So, I love you, dude. You yeah. couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> okay. Cool. There was freedom taken away. I mean, America became not America for a chunk of time, and that really threw people. People were looking at this election as this could go sideways real quick. Do those policies actually mm -hmm. bring justice, or does it create other sure. problems that were, are unplanned? I think that there's a, a possibility that had this swayed the opposite direction, that it actually could have been a leaning and a slippery slope towards the loss of some freedoms that we value now. I'm an articulate, so we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is Jeff. It's episode 250. Welcome. Andy, how's it going? Red and blue make purple. <laughs> Zachary? <laughs> puff, puff, pass. We got a guest in the house. Jeff, how you doing? I am doing excellent after this election. What? Woo, go Trump! <laughs> <laughs> My team won. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and we're off. Well, yes, we are off. We're off and, and uh, maybe not running, but hey, welcome listeners and viewers. This is Bros, Bibles, and Beer. We are a podcast where we have serious conversations about faith and culture without taking ourselves too seriously. I'm Andy McCraw, host joined by my good friend, Zachary Crater. Hi. Jeff Pearson <laughs> on the ones and twos. And uh, our good friend, Kerry Robinson. Yo, yo. Sitting in on a post-election episode. After voting for Andy. Yeah, thank you. I, I Right I'll, in ballots. Right me. in ballots. I saw yeah. my name right there beneath. <laughs> Who was that guy that had the crazy name that like off, promised everyone a pony? <laughs> oh, uh, Vermin Supreme. Vermin Supreme. Oh, four, was yeah. that four years ago? Uh, yeah. He, okay. Well, he is every election. I don't... Until now, I think he's been on every one for a while. Jill Stein, Vermin Supreme, Andy <laughs> McCraw, right out of there. Everyone gets a pony. I like that, that uh, platform. Now, before we get into exactly who everyone voted for, uh, did you actually write in a candidate? I, you, you I did, too. <laughs> I did. Yes? I, I wrote in Gerald Milton Crater. <laughs> oh! <laughs> nice. My father. Oh, I haven't told him yet, <laughs> but they've been watching lately. So, oh, okay. surprise! Hey, nicely done. They'll probably be mad at me for that too. Though. <laughs> His full name sounds presidential. Oh yeah, it's very or assassinating. I was like, gonna say he's got the assassination gene. Perhaps. Maybe he's the president that assassinates. That's impressive. Why did you write him in? Just because you love him? I do love him. <laughs> I think he's a better man than both of the other ones. And um, I like that. There you go. I mean, clearly one of them, he's a better man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, well, I think it's pretty clearly both of them, if we're going by just straight character. But uh, why? I, uh, just, Cal it's easy in California because it was going to go to sure. Kamala. Um, if it was closer, I might have thought about it a little bit more, but probably not. There's a, it's a long can of worms, if that's even a, a term. That sounds it's disgusting. A, I know. It's a really long can of worms. Uh, I'm ar articulate, so we're going <laughs> to go that clean and articulate. Um, but yeah, so it's better. I, I've talked about it a little bit in the past, but frustrations with just the system in general and very consciously not voting for one of the two major party can uh, tickets makes me feel superior and above it all. So. <laughs> and above everyone. Like, yeah. Would you find yourself more in a libertarian vibe? Uh, directionally, yeah. yeah. Like anarchist, libertarian, basically directionally as little government intervention as possible. Yeah. So, and I recognize one party uh, claims to have more of an interest in that. Sure. And they, they probably do generally, but um, a lot of it is driven towards foreign policy and, and what we do around the world. And that conflicts with the way my faith operates. So. So I'm curious, um, for each person in the room, um, how, uh, describe what your feeling was when you woke up the next morning from this election versus the previous election? Relief. And not, not be based on who won. I mean... The relief for this election. Relief for this election that it was settled. It was done. Yeah. Like, like people, there's already enough division to sift through right now. Yeah. Um, but to go through another season of, we don't know who won. And then both sides, you can see how the Democrats right now, there are elements of it that are crying foul. And like, how do we get so many less votes than last time? 
maybe they cheated after <laughs> dealing rough. with the Republicans claiming cheating for so long and being made fun of it for it. And probably for some good reasons, just like, let it go. He's, he's gone. He's out. But to have it swing back the other way. And then if it was close enough, all sides were going to be claiming yeah. cheating. And ha- and do you remember back to four years ago, waking up the next morning and how did you feel? Oh, I, I don't remember. I don't know. Okay. Just similar. Like I lose every election because I'm a directional, directionally I'm anarchistic. So I kind of lose every okay. time. So. I was exhausted. <laughs> uh, back in 2020, I was exhausted because I had, I was sitting in a cold bathtub. I'd been there for three hours staring at the, Online results. I'm like, what is happening? Wait, you were in, Why a, cold, for three you in a cold bathtub. Uh, be, so it, was, it, was, it was hot. It, it, and I was, hot. it was hot and I was relaxing. And then three oh, hours later, dude. I'm like, I'm like, what is happening in Wisconsin? What just happened? 500,000 votes. What? Can you imagine the color of the water by the end of that? Uh, <laughs> so Holy brown. crap. Bloody it's red. Kramer situation. I feel like there's so many oh more options God. of what you could have. You could have gotten out of the bathtub at any point in time. More fine. hot water could have been added to the tub. <laughs> I think I had drained all the hot water, but I could not get out of the bathtub because I was afraid I was gonna I was gonna miss votes coming in for the Biden, uh, you know. Yeah, little whatever. did you know. Yeah. Okay, so that was t- uh, you woke up the next morning uh, trying to get your core temperature back up, <laughs> and you, but your general your general feeling was what. Uh, not good. I'm like, what just happened? Yeah. Literally, because I saw watching and doing refresh and seeing like 400,000 votes just came in for one candidate and somebody lost 100,000 votes. I'm like Biden gained 400. Yeah. Trump lost 100. What is happening here? And I'm like, something's gone sideways. Then I started looking at the other states and the same thing kept happening. And I'm like, should I, be? I feel like I should be recording what I'm watching here. Yeah. So there's some proof that something happened in the middle of the night. Hence the, everybody go to sleep, we'll handle this. And then this, and then the morning after this year? Relief. <laughs> I mean, just to think, watching Trump give a speech in the evening, he was subdued. Like, hey, I don't know what they're going to pull in the middle of the night this time. So I'm not, there was yeah. a lot less energy. And, uh, you know, I pretty much was like, I'm I'm anxious, but the fact that some news stations actually were calling Pennsylvania, I was like, okay, I think we can, we can move on here. And yeah. this is actually going to happen. What about you, Carrie? Yeah, I think 2020, I woke up and I was blown away. I couldn't, I was like, what in the world happened? How did the, what, what changed? And I, you know, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. And I, nice. you know, I don't know if I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I definitely wonder, was something up? Uh, but this year, I remember watching the speech and I was up hanging out with some friends and celebrating. I'm, I voted for Trump. I'm conservative by nature. And just being excited. But then I remember waking up the first thing, literally the first thing, just checking to see, did, did something, something change? Oh, yeah. Because even though at that point, I think by the time I went to bed, I mean, his speech was at, like, I want to say one thirty ish this, this the yes. West Coast. Yes. So it was still, it was still late. It yeah. Was early, early morning, if you will. And, man, I was just thinking, there is, is there, he had such a commanding lead. They were pretty much predicting Pennsylvania. And I thought, my gosh, is something happened? And when I looked and he secured those, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And kind of was stunned, to be honest with you. Yeah. Even just waiting until I think it was at, t- at the time of this recording today. Yeah. They officially called the house. Is that right, or was it yesterday? I forget the yesterday. days. Yesterday yeah. at the time of the recording. Oh, they got two eighteen. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. But that I mean that's how many days is that a week after the election? So. <clears throat> Even yeah. then, I'm going. Is something going to change in the process? So, like cautious optimism. Yeah, and I think even t- to Zach's point, I was just like, "Gosh, we have to move on at some point." Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, whoever wins, we're not going to die. So, like, all Democrats are right. not going to die if Trump wins, and vice versa. Hold on. Okay, my bad. No, actually, I want you to get get through it, and then Andy, you do yours, and then maybe we can we can do a little bit more of a deep breakdown. Yeah, fair, fair, yeah, fair. Yeah. I just was like, we got to move forward at some point. So, but I was, I was elated. Yeah. 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 I think I remember, uh, four years ago I woke up the, the next day and yes, there was some confusion. Like some of you guys had to like, wait, 
what just happened? I feel like when I went to bed, it looked differently. Um, and then that progressed over the next few days yeah. and months or whatever as as that played out. But there was never there was never like the the sense of impending doom. I didn't have that. It was more like, oh, all right, well, that didn't go how I thought it was going to go. Yeah. Um, but I didn't I didn't worry for my life. I didn't worry for my family's life lives um or friends uh <clears throat> just hey th- that's how that one went and my response this year was yeah there was a little for me cautious optimism as well uh this seems okay it's been it's been so energized and so charged in the last 4 years of of any of this kind of stuff that i think we've all kind of like learned to like tread cautiously lightly, yeah. yeah very very lightly in this area but yeah. um, I woke up feeling optimistic seeing those numbers. And at the same time, too, it was like, hey, I hope good things happen from this. I sure. Ho- I hope positive things move the country forward. And, but again, like it wasn't the re- – I didn't have the exact opposite. Or maybe I did. I had the, I had like if, – if this is the fence of, of emotions and these are the far extremes, it was like – 2020, uh, kind of fell on this negative side of the fence. 2024, uh, I fell yeah. on this side of the positive fence. Yeah. And most of that, I think, is like I try to take a wait and see approach. Like, let's see what happens. Because I feel like I've been, I got fooled for a long time. <laughs> and in like 2008, that's when I kind of came to the point where I went, wait a minute. Are there two parties? <laughs> If yeah. you squint, sometimes you can't tell. Sure. Every every candidate forever has run on like, hey, we need to get out of these useless wars, kind of like running on a more of a peaceful, like yeah. isolationist is kind of drastic, but sort of in that vicinity from like George W. Bush to um I think Clinton too, and George W. Bush, Obama, all of them, you know, Trump, uh, have all sort of run on that and then they get in there and it's like, oh, uh, business as usual. Yeah. Let's find another war to get into or whatever. Another- I, don't, I don't think Bush second term was no wars. I think that was like <laughs> no, no, no. But when they first some, when they first get some ran wars going. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's how he won the <laughs> second one. Yeah. Is because he's like he was the man back then. That's fine. Let's find us some wars. Yeah, but I have a I have a question about sort of and or Carrie, you brought up sort of the doom and gloom, like how some people are like, yeah, it's the end of the world. Both like you heard from the left side of the aisle that this is the most important election in our lifetime, Mm -hmm. that there might not be another election from depending on the source you picked Mm -hmm. because a fascist was going to, we were going to elect a fascist or we're going to vote to end democracy basically, which is a contradiction in terms and always tickled me a little bit. (laughs) Like, wait a second. We might vote to end democracy, which I suppose there's a possibility if he sure. he was a fascistic dictator. But you had that on the left. And also you got people like Elon Musk, who I think is way too smart to say stuff like this, but he was in full cheerleader oh, mode sure. saying this will be the he last election. This will be the last election if Trump doesn't win. And I think neither side is right about that. And I don't think most of them believe what they're saying, but I think some of the followers of both sides believe that. And so now you have a, a decent chunk of people that really think the world is going to end because I, Trump is in. You might have misheard him, though, because I, I think he said this is the last erection. Okay. <laughs> okay. If probably if the other side. That's <laughs> actually more factual. <laughs> For some people, although I feel like rage boners are a thing. So probably a lot of that, <laughs> that was going my band on right name now. back yeah, in the day. <laughs> rage boners. <laughs> It was and a, now carrying the rage boners. It was a short, <laughs> short EP. Short EP. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Uh, I think the. I I I I think there's some truth to it. I think that there's a possible a possibility that had this swayed the opposite direction, that it actually could have uh, been a a leaning and a slippery slope towards the loss of some freedoms that we value now. I really do believe that. I don't think it was the end of, of days. I'm not a, uh, I remember when Obama was running for office, we lived in Arizona at the time. I've, I've been conservative my whole life and I will never forget like people saying, this is the most pivotal election of all time. 
And then when Obama got voted in, I, I mean, I had probably half a dozen friends who started prepping and built yeah. like buried, you know, 50 gallon jugs of yeah. AK 47s and millions of rounds of ammo and gold bars in their backyard and all that kind of stuff. Because where, where is this house? Yeah, and it's uh, uh, 1475. Is this the meeting top? place? If stuff yeah. really gets bad, then... No, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, there's more to that story, but I can't tell it because... Of course somebody, you can. <laughs> yeah. But I, I remember thinking, this is a little insane. Um, it's been a lot worse for a lot of civilizations yeah. than this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel like if you lived in Poland in 1938, 1939, that was pretty rough. And uh, it's pretty early to pull the Hitler card in the episode, but we'll allow it. I'm just it. saying, <laughs> I think that was pretty rough. I think if you were in, what is it, the People's Republic of Congo, and I mean, there's so many places it's been a lot worse than this. You see the Mongol hordes yeah. coming over the hill. Yeah, I think that there's some things that that are have been worse, but I do, some of the stuff that I watched, we all watched, but we might have seen it from different perspectives happen over the last couple of years. I'm going, man, these are, this is encroaching really closely to removal of some freedoms that we actually yeah. well, value. I, th- I think that did, I think that did happen, uh, especially in the state, you know, state of California, just having so many people have their businesses go bankrupt, shut down um, because they force people not to be out and to have to do certain things and to be fired because of it. Yeah. Um, whether it's vaccinations or not, or wearing masks or, um, you know, there, there were some serious restrictions. There was freedom taken away. I mean, America became not America, uh, for a chunk of time. And that really threw people and people were looking at this election as, you know, yeah. uh, this, this could go sideways real quick if this power continues because we really have no idea who's behind it, but it, it's evil and it's not about freedom. It's been interesting too, to see like the privacy and censorship stuff that is, that has come out as well. Mm-hmm. Just, just getting a glimpse into seeing where government had direct interactions totally. with, with uh, publications and social media, outlets. social media outlets as well. Yeah. That, um, that's scary. It's creepy for sure. That's scary. It reminded me of, 2020 it was um late fall and newsom finally said okay churches you can meet but no more than 100 people and you can't sing that is that's the kind of stuff that i'm going it if we can be shut down as a church i can go to jail even nothing actually ever happened but that's because some freedom fighters right went to court about that but if I, i didn't have the means to go to court for that yeah and so to me, that's the stuff where it's infringing. And I would feel the same way if it was a Republican governor. Sure. It wouldn't matter. And that's the stuff that's scary, but we just kind of dismissed that. And we kind of swept it under the rug and moved on. And it, that's the part where I go, I don't think the world's going to end the last election, but ooh, there's some things that are a little scary that maybe five elections from now we'll see yeah. real repercussions from. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I would push back on that um, as a possibility. One of the things that drove me one of the things I don't like about the Harris campaign was from some of that, the COVID stuff. And I think a lot of people were there as well when they're talking, like they dubbed it among other things, joy. It was the joy Mm -hmm. campaign. It was the freedom campaign. Like we're all about freedom, but then I'm just thinking of less of what Kamala has done recently or anything in vice president, but when she was an, an attorney general and she's like, doing interviews, laughing about smoking marijuana. Meanwhile, people are rotting in prison right now yeah. for, for her putting him away for nonviolent yeah. drug offenses. I'm like, that's a character issue that I can't overlook. And then somebody like Walls, who, and obviously you guys, everyone knows I don't like, I didn't vote for Trump for different reasons, but. Hey, uh, Zach, it's, it's coach. Okay. <laughs> coach Walls. <laughs> Let's get it right. He can, they can run a mean, he can call, pick a, sick, call pick a pick six. six. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but he, during COVID, having uh, basically a, a snitch line for people to call, hey, my neighbor's yeah. having a party outside. Um, that doesn't sound like freedom to me. And, and it's like, especially, I understand er, very early on, within the first month, it, there was so much fear and so many question marks. But to have something like the snitch line, tell on your neighbors. Let me see rat, your papers. Rat people out. I mean, that's... And you you want to put those people in power? You you don't. My biggest problem with all these people is the 
the power of the state mm-hmm. to be able to enforce law, laws at the at the tip of a gun. Um, and so when you give state power or whoever's in there, if it's your person, you're going to approve all the things they do because you're on a team. And uh, so that's my my biggest Maybe, problem. Maybe unless trying you're to- a little more sophisticated in your thinking and you can pick and choose, like all of us are in this room, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we've outlined it. Jeff's a multi-party <clears throat> voter over over the years, voting for Democrats and Republicans, presidential wise. So I I agree with you. Um, a lot of people are like that, but uh, just when he's the, the, when the car- actual actions run counter to the words that are being used, I'm like, that's red flag. And like the uh, mandatory buyback that Harris was pushing, and then talked about, don't break into my house, or you're going to get shot. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a challenge. What happens is if you're on that team, you'll overlook that stuff and you won't critique it because you know, then you'll get flack from your team. Mm-hmm. And you, we can come up with numerous examples on the other side too. So I I felt optimistic the morning after. What actually made, has made me more interested and and more excited has been to see uh, and hear from people who Trump is bringing onto his oh, yeah. team. That's more interesting to me than Trump is, actually. So, <laughs> if it's true that Elon supposedly is going to get two point three trillion dollars out of the budget, God bless him, please. Prepare to be disappointed. I know, I know. <laughs> it's going to be hard to push that needle that fast. I think it will be okay. And then uh, I like RFK Jr. making America healthy again, dismantling a bunch of what's- coming after the FDA strong. I uh, and. <laughs> Before they're in office. <laughs> All of these others. To the point that I, I heard it today, I was like, man, someone had mentioned maybe uh, maybe Trump is announcing these things now because he's worried he won't make it to office. Mm. And so he has to get these things out there. Interesting. That's the conspiracy theory number one for the yeah. evening. <laughs> I, I love the... RFK is right about the health stuff. Yeah. Like I know a lot of people hate him for the vaccine stuff and they uh probably not in this room. Um I'm not I'm not up enough on the vaccine things to to like disagree or agree with that although after the way we saw pharmaceutical industries deal with stuff in covid it's like I got plenty of questions. But the health stuff there's like there's no doubt we're oh, yeah. so sick and uh we're so sick and the processed foods that they won't allow in, in the same food product in Europe that they allow here, yeah. that, that kind of thing. If we even nudge a little bit in that direction, that's going to go, that's going to reap dividends as we used to say on this podcast. <laughs> I saw, I saw a meme that showed, um, the, uh, heads of the FDA, like the last four or eight of them, uh, maybe it's four, last four heads of the FDA and the job that they took right after the FDA. And every single one was to like uh, to big pharma company, of course, lobbyists. Yeah, it's Food this lobbyists, big, big yeah. pharma circle. lobbyists. So yeah. yeah, hold on. Let me let me take care of you, and then once I take care of you, when I get out of my m- position, millions. you take care of me. It like, works the same with the military, the military, military Cheney, industrial yeah. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that was so. B- foreign policy is a big bugaboo for me. And so Did you say bugaboo, bugaboo. Okay. Uh, is that racist? I don't know. No, that's not. I know what you're thinking of, and the fact that you thought of that is racist. Now you're uh, racist. Oh, crap. <laughs> Canceled. It wasn't before. Uh, I'll look it up. It I'll wasn't before, but now it is. <laughs> you're racist. I'll show myself out. <laughs> um, but when the Cheneys are endorsing, like they were the evil ones back in the mm-hmm. day for the left. That's and weird, man. When they are endorsing somebody like Trump, it it says something, and I don't know if it says enough. You mean the, Harris? They endorsed Harris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. sorry. Um. It, the reason for that is Harris would be status quo, Team America, kind of what we've been su- doing. I was so surprised that, that felt like so one weird. that that you're like, dude, Democrats. We are in a wait, simulation. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be like waving the flag on this one, right? Yeah, you guys were really against the, Dick Cheney was the devil. Yep. Yeah, anti-war, anti-war, anti-Dick Cheney, and and she is quite literally the spawn of the devil, and you're. You're not even okay yeah. with this. According you're to ce- them, you're celebrating it. Like that part, that was ba- it was mind blowing. It was baffling. I, I I was struggling to wrap my head around it, but then I remembered that uh, it's just one team, one dream. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, and fueled by money. Yes, fuel. Oh, for sure, fueled by money. 
Um, but I, so I am excited about that. Tulsi, I like Tulsi. I like oh, yeah. uh, RFK Jr. I like Elon. I like these people who uh, know enough. Um, and I'm hoping my fingers are crossed that they're not like tainted or inundated by uh, the swamp, so to speak. I love though how Trump was like, I told RFK, not the oil. Don't touch my oil. Sorry, Jeff. You can, you're the Trump guy. Yeah. I like how he said, come in and make a change, but here's what you can't touch. At least he's upfront with everybody about it. And yeah. I think, okay, that's RFK. Don't touch the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Leave the dogs and the cats alone. Leave the pets. <laughs> I also, I'll tell you this. I thought it was pretty cool that he, even on, on the speech on the election night, just kept bringing other people up. JD, come up here. Dana, come up. I just thought that was a cool thing instead of even just making it about him. And I wonder if either he's concerned he's going to get shot or maybe he's realizing he's got to set up the future for success and not just himself. I don't know. Well, I don't know what the numbers are, but there's a probably better than average chance that he doesn't, not not assassination attempt, but he's just old. Yeah. That he passes away before the term ends. Which, really? What do you think that there's that, a that seems crazy? Better well, the average life expectancy of better, he's yeah. at it. Yeah, he's basically. 72, 71, somewhere in there. Yeah, so definitionally better I think than 74 average. And for he's, average male. He's kind of fat. So <laughs> Yeah, but he's got like literally the best medical care in the world. Yeah, but when he says I was I was inspected. I was going to say we should make a, we should make a bet tonight to see if oh, like Trump this. dies of natural causes. I've before been looking four years. for that because I want to put mo- actual money let's, on it. Let's you do think it tonight. Gonna, let's I do would it. not put money on him dying before natural I wouldn't causes. Either. That guy's never going to die. Assassination, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, sadly, that's which yeah. sucks. That it's that's sad. Yeah, that that's even on the table. So what do you? I I've got I've got a pretty interesting tweet uh, or X thread. From somebody that I can only assume is a Democrat, but it he has a lot of thoughts on why the Democrats lost that I think are measured and honest in a way that right when right when it was called and then a couple of days after, we've probably all seen it, it's basically I didn't know how racist America was and misogynist. Like mm. this is why oh, that's why it this happened. is why Trump Trump won is because America is racist and misogynist. And I think that's an easy way to to th- to not think critically about why if you're on, if you're a Democrat why you lost, and I think there's a lot of there's a lot of better reasons that would help you going forward. Um, yeah, and so maybe we'll get to that in a minute. But it, the the thought was the thought I had on that is Kamala performed worse in every demographic every demographic. than Biden, and. Trump doesn't win the popular vote. He made inroads in every single area that, you know, even if he didn't get the majority of Hispanics, he he made inroads and she lost and she lost to to black men, like every area. That is not just racism mm-hmm. and misogyny. Excuse me. I know I know there is a certain percentage of that. I don't know what it is. I think it's a lot lower than those people would like sure. racist some people just don't want to have a woman president but it goes the other way too so you could one could probably imagine if there's a if there's racism in one direction whatever yeah. percentage let's make it up let's say it's five percent there's probably five percent on both sides that sure. were racist in in these these directions so okay for or for whatever reason or misogynist i mean i'm seeing calls in either direction i'm seeing calls to kill hey i'm gonna carry a gun and if i see a white man at night i'm gonna shoot you yeah like I, you see those t- types of calls which are mostly harmless. They're not real, but it's still, there's a very, we've been trained so long to think in terms of a bigotry and racism and sexism that, that, that if that's the lens you look through, that's all you'll see anything, yeah, but then sure. you'll miss out in the real reasons why you lost. Yeah. I think, a, I think one of the big, one of the big problems with the Democrat party is they're not up to speed on how people are getting their information. Um, Watching MSNBC and CNN is what older people are doing, but younger crowd they don't even know what the news yeah. is. So they, so in terms of you know pushing this agenda of of racism, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that don't even hear it at all. Like I have a huge Hispanic population in my in my school in my classroom. I always do a vote, and it was nineteen or twenty two to five in in. In Trump's favor, the last two elections, 
when people were at home, they were concentrated on... And your class is mostly... You know, sorry, you already yeah, said Hispanic. this. Your, your class yeah, is it's it's Hispanic, huge yeah. Hispanic population. I mean, definitely leaning Democrat always has been, and it was a landslide for Clearly Trump. Clearly racist. I, I'm just <laughs> like, you got to be kidding. But it's. I think it's you know because... People are getting their information from other places. They don't want to hear the junk anymore. They want to hear from all kinds of people, people that entertain them and engage them. I don't think them that's and, fully it, but keep going. Well, I mean, to, to look have gone and, on Rogan, Kamala. <laughs> to see that the, the Latin male vote went in Trump's favor is saying a whole lot in California. Oh, huge. I mean, it's, it's gigantic. And the, the idea... That Riverside County, which is a huge, huge Hispanic yeah. population, it almost was 50-50. Um, I mean, it is it is unfathomable to think that that county could be flipped um, in, in the red, but it's very close. I didn't have any direct encounters with anyone. I didn't hear anything anecdotally. I didn't see anything that where anyone claimed for any reasons related to racism that they were choosing to vote who... Or who they voted for? And you mean personally? Uh, I, I, in in none of the media that I consumed, in none of the conversations I had, in none of the conversations I heard about, I didn't hear about anyone, or, or I, I didn't encounter one instance of someone saying, "Here's why I'm voting, and it's racially motivated." I saw a few where people were voting for Kamala because she's black. They were black. She they were voting, but that would be anecdotal and like. You know, man on the streets kind of stuff. Well, Biden, that was his reason for picking her. Yeah. He said, I, I will choose a woman of color. And then he chose her. And it's like, you kind of uh, threw under the bus. I think you're conflating. That was the Supreme Court justice that he... No, he did no, it with, he Kamala said that with Kamala. He did it both? Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the problem... That guy's got to get more creative. Yeah, the, well, the problem I have with that is, like, is just say, hey, I'm going to choose the best person for the job. Yeah. And then when you pick whoever, even Kamala in this case... Then it's not all of a sudden, oh, you just chose her for her skin color. The DEI her. candidate. Yeah. And so you don't think he did. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fact search check that. it. Uh, if our producer could fact check that, he's going to find it pretty quick. It feels like, uh, yeah, he's nope, looking, it's not here. He's yeah. looking at the back of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> he read his own I, palm. I don't think that the reason people, that the vote swayed so much is because the Democratic Party had a false representation of where people were getting their information. I think it's because the American populace is not a reflection of what the media says it is. And they were tired of the bullshit. I think that at the end of the day, the, the thing that they stood on was uh, abortion and gender ideology. That's what the democratic party stood on. That was their number one platform. And if you look at all the polls, those were the least represented in the, in what was voted for and and you obviously there are people large swaths of the nation who would vote vastly different than I would with regards to abortion or gender sure. politics or sexuality whatever but the major thing was like I am broke as a joke yeah. and so they chose I think they just chose the wrong platform and people were like I don't care as much as you think I do about that platform I'm trying yeah. to figure out how do I in how do I expand my expendable income because that is where is running tight, and I mean, obviously, I'm not a news pundit, but I just think that people were were they could read the writing on the wall of themselves. It was interesting to me in in debates. I felt like there should have been a a, a lot more. It, this should have happened way more often. When asking why should uh, why should Joe voter vote for you, and if you're on the Republican side, it the answer should have been simple every single time. Hey, think about. The four years before mm -hmm. this last administration, what was your life like? Mm -hmm. Okay, now think of it in the last four years. What was your life like? Which one of those would you prefer? <laughs> you have examples to choose from. Which one of those do you want? Now, I'll set aside the fact that they say that it takes like four to eight years for a sure, president's sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> actions to take effect and who's really reaping the dividends of that. Yeah, that's but, but that I think in general, that's how people tended to react. Hey, I remember what it was like. I felt like my life was better. It was easier, and there were fewer. There was fewer wars in the world. Mm -hmm. Last four years have been really hard. Okay, which one do I want? I don't know if anyone goes deeper math than that. Yeah, I think you're I spot mean, on. Sorry, people do go deeper math than that, but maybe the vast majority 
that becomes the prevailing Well, and it wasn't trending influence. up. It was trending down. It's trending in the wrong direction, with the exception of the half a percent that the Fed dropped the interest rate. See, you aren't a news pundit. <laughs> Tonight you are. <laughs> I just am, <laughs> I'm read. I'm learned. No, they were just, they were out of touch. They were out of touch with, I mean, in the end, it was like 90, 96% economy. That economy and just financial, that was it. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's pretty clear. Like, if you're, if you are a news pundit and you're in DC and you're doing the circuit, doing all the shows, you, inflation doesn't really touch you. And so when you hear sure. people complaining about inflation, it's not that bad. Yeah. And then, then at some of the, uh, at one of, at one of the rallies for Kamala, there was. Um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I just think of that Tracy Tracy Morgan bit <laughs> when he's on when he's on Thirty Rock, and they're like, "Tracy Jordan, I think you're out of touch with the with uh, Middle America." <laughs> he's like, "What do you mean?" It cuts to him doing a, a stand up. He's like, "You know what it's like when you're at St. Bart's and people be eating their lobster like." <laughs> mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs> like I mean, that was kind of the example I was going to say. Is is a. Uh, Cardi B, I think it was Cardi B, uh, at was talking about how she was going to fix like all the price gouging and make make things yeah, cheaper. Right. And she's like, I mean, stuff's even expensive for me, and it's yeah. just like so wah, out of wah, touch. Wah, wah, like, wah. okay, you're pretty much a billionaire. And, yeah, and it's like, no, it's not true. People, enough people see through that sort of thing, and which you made the joke about she should have gone to Rogan, and she should have. It would have been a hail mary, but. You get three hours and maybe you could see a little bit of her humanity and nobody got to see that. Well, she also wanted to, him to go to her and only do an hour. Did you hear that? Yeah. So Other I've, people in the room. Yeah. yeah. So they're trying to control it, which... And I, I love, get I, I love what he said. He said, let me just talk to you. We'll have a conversation. And Yeah. So it would have either been... It would have been really good. I was hoping it would happen. Or disastrous. Yeah. So one of the things I've found myself... Uh, feeling, and we've talked about it a little bit just in text or in, in discussions on the side, but I have, I have wanted to reach out to friends of mine who I know did not vote the same way that I did mm-hmm. and who I know are, um, are they hurting at some, at some level? They're like, it's, it's, they're not in a great place. And what makes me really, uh, I don't know if sad is the right word, but, I feel I feel really bummed out that I don't feel like I can reach out because of the way that that'll be received. Um, and like no matter what I do, and and the, and I get that there's some sensitivity. Like, hey, sure. look, it's things are are energized right now, so that that's okay. Should we? And, and there's no, and and I definitely don't want to be like, hey, spiking the ball. Like that's not it at all. It's and. <laughs> I don't know. I think in one of our conversations on the side, I'd mentioned something like, I don't want this to be like, Hey, so I mean, <laughs> your team lost in the Super Bowl to my team. A good job. And how's it feel to be a loser? <laughs> like, how's it feeling today with your loss? Everyone loves second place. Yeah. You you know what? You're the runner up, which isn't that bad. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot. Of, you see a lot of that online too. It's like, and I'm not loving that either. No, There's a lot of no. Di- there is some ball spiking going on. I think the hard part is like for well, uh, if Carrie's going to show him, then yeah. Well. <laughs> for me, the the <laughs> challenge is, and maybe it's probably my probably my personality more than anything, but the people I knew that were on a different side of the perspective were the ones that were DMing me all the reels, like it was going to change my mind, like the video clips of maybe you haven't thought about it this way, Palestinian this way. children you know, massacred in the streets because of the war in Gaza and videos of, you know, transgender kids that are, you know, depressed and contemplating suicidal ideation because of the laws in the state. And they're just D that that was how they were talking after the election before, before. Okay. So in other words, prior to the election, the people that I knew that were on the other side, the only two experiences I have, either they didn't say anything or they were militant with their posts and statements like that was going to sway my opinion. Nobody would want, nobody wanted civil discourse about it. Right. And so, which is, I'm, I will take ownership. I'm not suggesting this. Therefore I'm sure it has to do with my personality as well. So the people who I do know, I'm not going to go back to the ones who sent me all the DMS and be like, Hey, are you okay? 
You know what I I'm know. saying? I know. It's a weird dynamic. Uh, you, I got, you sense that in, maybe in a different way. A different I don't think it could be it. received anything other than like a slight and a like condescension, which would never be my intention. It, no. Yeah. We, we've, so my wife and I talked about this. If, if four years ago, Joe Biden won, we're like, ah, oh, man. Okay. But what you say, we, we, we felt like <laughs> if it had gone the other way, if it had gone the other way, like Democrats are, they have a weak bone in them. They just, they can't, they can't handle it. All Democrats across all of them. the entire United all States. Of them. All of them. Sweeping statements Every are never wrong. Every single one of them. 73 million that voted for Kamala. <laughs> Got weak bones, man. Got weak bones. <laughs> Got, the children, <laughs> they love to rub the hair on my legs and <laughs> feel my weak bones. <laughs> Who shit my pants? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Uh, I think it's easy to say that. I don't know if that's real. We, uh, I don't think they'll listen to this podcast. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> but with the, go ahead. Oh, if you have a thought, hold I was, on. I was I, gonna, yeah, go ahead. And finish your thought. <laughs> I, I, I might be shifting the conversation a little bit. Or if you, or if you want us to depart from that, let's side. have some fun with it. Okay. Hey, let's keep going about how. Hey, let's keep going about how weak the Democrats are. Just um, their weakness. I have, I have family. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know why I'm pussyfooting around it because they uh, they know that yeah. my family, my entire family is f- like, they live in Texas. So they are more Texan than they are American. But I have other Which fam- is real. Yeah, it's a, the Republic of Texas is no joke. <laughs> Israel? They, Israel. Israel. And so... <laughs> that too. That side of the family, I'm going to be with them in two weeks. And um, I was like, Talking to my wife, I was like, oh, I'm bringing up politics. And I, I would never do that because, to an extent, they're not weak bone. They're strong, very intelligent people. But it would not go. There's nothing good is going to come from it. I'll get a laugh and tell great stories because I will walk away unscathed. But it could fracture the relationship yeah. to a point that we may not be able to hang out with them anymore. Mm. And no matter, it would be impossible. I would either have to bring it up, like throw a grenade and say nothing else and just let them say what they want to say, which is never, I'm, it's not real conversation or yeah. it's going to be volatile. But isn't that a problem? Yeah, I mean, but I, I wouldn't say it's because they're Democrats. I'm just ooh. saying that's just the nature of it. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but isn't it a problem that you, you can't have a discussion, have a, conversation completely disagree and be like all right like hug it out okay. let's have another glass yeah of wine. seriously yeah why, why can't why can't that side yeah. do that um so i i'm with carrie the the, the sweeping generalization I, I know there are some that that will be like that but um and this is anecdotal but I, I have people in my orbit that if I bring it, I have complicated views that don't yeah. fit into the right or the left, um, theologically and politically. If I bring up certain things that are, that are maybe counter to the way Israel is conducting business mm-hmm. or the way that the church and the government as and the church is an extension of the government support Israel, no matter what, like, even if I'm just asking questions like, What's sure. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Uh, Tucker. <laughs> Tucker. Oh. <laughs> I'm just asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. That's not a good Tucker I, impersonation. Of course it's not. I don't do good impersonations. That one was, though. Trying, <laughs> the that was my, the, the laugh is pretty good. The laugh is good, but the um, of course it's not was a better. Yeah. Okay, of course keep it's going. not. Uh, but uh, it gets awkward real quick so i don't bring things up because i know it will it's like people won't receive it in a way that hey yeah. i want to have an honest conversation about it and exchange ideas yeah um so there are certain lines that are being that are potentially being crossed that are indefensible with some of these issues and as a christian who is for that believes everyone is an image bearer of god and all of us are in this conversation and, and who i'm talking about in this in my orbit it gets awkward real quick and mm-hmm. it it's not digestible in sort of the way that Jeff is talking about with mm-hmm. the other side too. So, and I know that's just anecdotal. I would agree with that. But sacred cows exist. I think right now- On Jeff, both sides. They do, but uh, to Jeff's point, I think right now 
the left is a little less tolerant of opposing views. And I think that's probably d- demonstrable, but as the right has the power right now, very soon you will see that there'll be purity tests. And like, if you, you can't stray outside the lines and it will flip back because the right used to be the ones that were offended about everything and pearl clutchy right now, the left is a little more pearl clutchy, um, but it'll swing back. Maybe. I don't know. The right is memeing so much harder than the left <laughs> these days. It feels like they've somehow swung the cultural uh, the cultural leg over the fence. I don't know what that analogy is. You know, uh, but that wasn't really the point I was hoping to <laughs> make. The thing that I, uh, that I, struck me, though, was uh, especially people who I know who are, who are Christians um, who have tied their identity so closely to their political belief system – and um, to the point that it's like uh, it, it's it's indistinguishable from their uh, their theological beliefs. Mm-hmm. Um, that part worries me a little bit, and because what each of you have described is it it makes having a conversation impossible, and and that I think is a dangerous area for us to be as a culture and as a society, where if we feel like um, it's it's too sensitive for us to have meaningful conversations about things that are important to us, then, uh, then, then everyone will continue to walk in parallel lines. Right. But for the Christians who tie themselves to these things, Mm -hmm. that's the part where I go, wait, wait a minute, wait, where, where are your priorities? Where is your identity actually, uh, rooted in? What does that mean to you when you say that? I would, I think I agree with you when you say for Christians who have their identity rooted in, in it, what, can you drill a little deeper for me? I think usually what it will be is they will they will tie their belief system to their political heroes. Ah, uh, okay. And so, uh, and so they will. There's like a a vicarious. Uh, it's weird. It definitely happened. Trump sp- more than any Republican candidate I've ever seen. I've been in the church world. Yeah. And I've been in ministry for 25 years, but grew, my dad was a pastor. And Trump, there is something messianic about him to some Christians. There is that was, what you mean? Uh, either way, you can you can you can pick it on either side. Obama was that, or yeah, true for Democrats oh, yeah. as well. Very right? true. Right? And so, and and I think that starts very early in in someone's lifetime that those things start getting planted. Hey, these are core to who you are, and they're indistinguishable from your uh, theological beliefs. Don't you feel like that shifted though post Trump's first term? Like I feel like I I I'm trying to remember back to 2016. I voted for Trump all three elections. Um but I don't remember the same like you're talking about and like now this, you'll never have to vote again because we're we're done. <laughs> we're done. That gravitational theological pull to him, I feel like it really it was the start of it was the 2020 election. And then the fact that he lost, it was like a slingshot into orbit of if you are a Christian, Trump, no one would ever say this, but you, Trump is the savior, not he's pushing the policies that we have biblical values for. Because to be honest with you, some of his policies, he was like, I'm actually. I think the states should choose on abortion. He was kind of a, it was a sure. great passive aggressive. Yeah. He's way more moderate than correct. Than the Democrats want with people abortion to specifically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and some others, not as much. That's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, abortion. It, but I think, don't you feel like that to really was a, the catalyst was post 2020 election, <laughs> at least for Trump specifically with I mean, Christians. The Christian coalition has existed for sure, 40 years sure, or whatever. Sure. And so they, they would kind of like it really, anoint, anoint a candidate. Reagan was the big original yeah. one, um, but yes, more recently, yeah, with Trump. And and it results in, I think the way the world gets better is if people critique their own, which never happens. We always kill the prophets. Yeah, we, yeah. Prophets get killed, biblically and anything modern, like people that speak out against their own tribe, like, hey, if you keep doing this, we're going to have disaster. Um, And so you end up, because it's a zero-sum game, and because it's the last and most important election of our lifetime, <laughs> um, you can't cede any ground. We're fighting a culture war, and therefore, in war, there's two sides, and mm-hmm. you can't cede any ground. Mm-hmm. And that makes us, 
it retards our growth and it it makes us dumber if we're like totally bought into culture war. I'm just glad we could say that word again. You did a great job. I was going to well, say. I danced around it a little bit. No, no, I appreciated it. it was I used good it use. classically. <laughs> uh, but but was, one thing was that, pretty retarded, thing but that you jumps, did a good job. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm talking, so it's. I'm, <laughs> hey, if you would retard the retardedness over there, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> hey, when are we going to make uh, old fashioned? I was wondering Let's the same. Oh, yeah. Let's get that started. Uh, Who am but, I supposed to listen to? We have all the good stuff. <laughs> just start it. Carries I cannot on. keep my headphones on and sit with this mic. And oh, yeah. Just, you won't need the headphones. Yeah, you don't you need the headphones. Take the headphones off. Yeah, That's yeah. really an ornament. Yeah. They're, they're for fun. We're not running any. Uh... <laughs> I'm a little retarded. Sorry. <laughs> but one, one big critique I have of. We'll fix that. Trump, or you'll fix that. Trump and Elon Musk, especially Elon Musk, he's the free speech guy. <laughs> um, do you guys remember Trump talking about flags burning? Like when there were protests and people were burning flags uh, regarding Israel, They're Palestine. They're burning the flags. <laughs> My wife was just talking about burning flags this week. No, no, it's no joke. So he's Trump just talks off the cuff, and it's one of the things that makes him great, and one of the things that makes him terrible is this. It's the same sure. thing, and it's refreshing. And that's why he gets so much attention. It's it, called the weave, Zach. He's not like Kamala. Oh, I incorporate the weave. I might be doing it right now. <laughs> I'm pre-weaving right now. Um, but he said, you know, maybe we should explore a, a year of jail time if you burn an American flag. And this is where the cult of personality kicks in, where people would be like, we should do that. Yeah, I love America. You shouldn't do that. Meanwhile, it's a violation of the Constitution. It's protected free speech. Trump hasn't no idea about that because he doesn't have the principles that we ascribe to him. Um, yeah. It's it's the very thing he stands against is what Carrie said. Yes. Just and, yell it. And, and, you know, it's probably reasonable to take any politician what they say with a grain of salt, regardless if it sounds right or not. Because in reality, what actually ends up showing up in policy and in our lives uh, is like a shadow of what is promised. You know, this, I'm sorry to change this. I mean, Carrie's sitting here making I'm drinks in, in front of, of everybody. I wish we had had some, uh, you know, Carrie was a Democrat and we had a bet. You're going to make drinks on our podcast <laughs> if Harris If loses. Trump wins, <laughs> just feel awkward that if I knees. win, you're toast. You're going to make us all drinks You'll make us and all you're going to love it. It's going to be the most amazing drinks you little retard. <laughs> That's Jeff. Uh, can I say? <laughs> there Old Jeff Joe it. Biden fashions. <laughs> um, by the way, Carrie, did you get kicked by a horse? <laughs> Your arm looks swollen back there. You've been juicing? <laughs> you on getting, the sauce? He's getting so big. Carrie is swole. Um, but... Why do we not have the mic on the drink? What is happening? I think it's, some of it's picking up. All right, he's making speed old fashions. <laughs> Carrie would tell you he would never. Um, he would never. Oh wait, make wait, him hold that quick. up, hold that up. Wait, hold that up to the. Just hold right a little higher. Like, I want to see that drink. Look at. Oh yeah. Wait, sh don't. That's some ASMR right there. That's nice. A little ass misser. <laughs> <laughs> We're so dumb. Oh, you guys don't pronounce it? <laughs> That's what we just, do these days. Eliminate the vowels. Is it, it's just me. No, you guys, the rest of you guys don't pronounce it. Oh, shoot. Man. This, is, uh, this is Kirkland bourbon. Bottle, <laughs> what's it? Bottled in bond. Yeah. So I bet, I, mean, I bet it's a halfway decent brand that I makes that. I bet you taste test it against three others and you probably can't tell the Probably day. not. Boys Definitely. and girls, if you're not, if you're not watching, uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, you're missing out. You got to go to YouTube. <laughs> We've got. He's making old fashions right now. And like, it's beautiful. He's on his knees. He's, we got the little manger where he's, <laughs> he's doing the drinks. It's uh, the, the phenomenal. Manger. Oh. Cutting oranges. So he's cutting oranges right now <laughs> to get the. And that's exciting. The peel. <laughs> because it's a proper old fashioned zesting them. Oh, All right. Okay. Thank you. Nope. Drinks oh, are being handed out. That'll be cool. Don't wait to cheers until everyone has been Zach, served. Zach, hold it up. You got one? I yeah, do have there one. There it is. There yeah, it is. This was uh, taken from the orange in my backyard. So it's as fresh as can be. 
It you, wasn't the forbidden fruit, though. Plenty of Roundup was used on this street. <laughs> <laughs> Minimal so, DDT. Maybe it was the forbidden fruit. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, anywho, where were we? <laughs> well, so I, I guess where where I let off with was I wish that I could have thank you, sir, like a genuine heart to heart conversation. I'd love even if even if those friends are like, yeah, it, I'm hurting. It yeah. sucks, and without me saying anything anything about how how I felt or it went for me, I would like to just be able to empathize with them and go. I hear you. I I want to be here with you, but instead, I feel like there's isolation that exists, and that uh, I feel like I can't reach across the aisle. All Cheers! Right. Let's reach Cheers. across this aisle. Cheers, Jeffrey. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's getting over. up to do actual touching. I think that was intentional. I think. Um, am I allowed to be spiritual, or do Ooh. I need to keep it? No, do it. No, Rose let's go beers. spiritual. I think, Spiritual. you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know how far y'all want to go, but all the way, um, I won't go, I'll go as deep as y'all want to go. But Do I it. think that at the end of the day, the scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers in dark places. Our nation is the longest standing nation with the same articles of incorporation in the history of humanity. And whether or not you fully agree there, whether you think it's fully was founded on biblical principles or partially we have biblical values as the bedrock of who we are. And so I think the enemy is at work to bring separation, division, and, and disunity. And if he at our core can get us, because I, I love what you said, Zach, you said that we're all image bearers. So whether you're a Democrat image bearer, a Republican Im- image bearer, or a, a libertarian, if he can get us at odds over that, let alone theology, it just spreads the divide even more. And so I think it's a tactical maneuver that has been, I, I believe, I don't know what y'all want to talk about tonight. I believe that we live in an applied postmodern world and it has been sped up as a result of that because applied postmodernism puts everyone into two groups, the oppressed or the oppressor. And so it just is, ba- it's like the enemy has just baited his way into this. So that's my own personal belief on What's that. What's the difference between applied postmodernism and just straight up old school Postmodernism, Pro- yeah, was post-modernism. Were, were ideas and concepts that were talked about, but you know, with like Derrida and Foucault, who started really pushing this stuff. Oh, there we the, are in the E. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not, that not a cuss word for movement church folks who are what, trying to figure out why I was making old fashions, and I said Foucault, not the other one. But uh, <laughs> they, when they started implementing that and teaching that at highest levels of education, it wasn't just thoughts of postmodernism. It became uh, a new world. We are not a America is not does not have a primary Christian worldview anymore, Judeo Christian worldview anymore. It is a it's it's split, and it's either fifty fifty or it is Christian with a residue and infiltration of applied postmodernism or fully there. But you don't have to talk about that if you don't want to, but that's my belief and opinion. Well, there's certainly some of that. Um, it's undeniable. I mean, if, if you just, it's filtering out of the academics and, and some of the, yeah, the college cancellations of professors that won't go along with black only days or whites go home days, or it's, that's all part of it is, you're either oppressed or oppressor. And I think thankfully most, I mean, I think this election is a result of, or an example of most people don't see things that way. Um, Most people just want to survive it and the economy. Like I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you and I, I I don't think I'm prepared to (laughs) have this conversation. I I generally know, but you brought up the biblical thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Biblical worldview. So for a lot of Christians, um, the Bible talks a lot about how you treat outsiders, immigrants, and how you're supposed to treat treat them or how Israel is supposed to treat them. And and for most Christians, they they look at Israel as like it got, you know, it might as well be talking to us about America. Um, I would quibble with that, but there's a lot of emphasis on immig- immigrants and how you welcome outsiders because you were once strangers in somebody else's land, you know, how, how you treat people here and now. And one of the big fears for a lot of our friends that are on, on the left and 
I confess, I, I share a lot of it is talk of mass deportation. That's not going away. The, the person he appointed for immigration is like doubling down. Like, oh yeah, like 2 million. I don't remember the number, but like mm-hmm. two, they're shooting for 2 million deportations a year. I don't think that will happen. I think bureaucracy note, and just I, all kinds of crazy things. And I think Trump has enough friends in big business that are like, you're going to fuck the economy up. <laughs> Sorry, mom. There's the E. Uh, if you actually do those deportations, you will literally mess the economy up big, big time, bigly. Uh, regardless, as Christians, like what, what do you say to people in your community that might be scared? Yeah. Or, I mean, we're, we're in an area that has communities with heavy Hispanic populations. Jeff works in that community. It'll be interesting to, to see um, how that plays out, but that's a, a real fear of like families getting broken up. There are plenty of examples probably countless of somebody that's here illegally has been here for 40 years. This is the same story as eight years ago though. Has a family of multiple kids that are now citizens. Sure. Um, I think, I don't know. What do you think? I think you have to bifurcate the law and compassion. I think they are inclusive, but they're not mutually inclusive. And so, um, the scripture I think you're referencing is that we're all engrafted now. That is in reference to faith, not of geographic location of your your birth. But we have to be able to go. I am equal. I am simultaneously compassionate towards the family. The the let's just remove the the criminals. Let's just say the fam. Just the di- trying Joe to do the Smo right thing. Just can't provide for his family, yeah. and he's like, let's get to America. And he does it illegally, and he gets to the border, and he's separated from it. That is devastating and horrible. And we should have compassion. And the, it's, what, it's what each one of us would do if we were in his shoes. A hundred percent. Maybe. Maybe we would do it legally, but that's a matter of your character and integrity. We'll talk about that later. But <laughs> I'm kidding. My Dude, point the is, system is so fucked up. No, you almost can't do it legally. No, you're not wrong. My friends, I'll come back to that in a second, but my friends... He's from Canada. She's here. And they went through the whole legal process. Thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 spent, did everything right. He was here legally, got deported. Went. Through, I mean, it was just a nightmare and still years. So just the, the system is broken. But what's we, weird is that they sent him to Mexico. <laughs> it was Venezuela. That's how broken it is. And, was, he, was, <laughs> and, he, was coming from, and he was coming from Canada too. It was like, who cares? Yeah. Let him come in illegally. Yeah. Anyways, I'm kidding. My point is, we can't change the fact. What are that- you doing here, man? <laughs> eh? What are you doing here, eh? Wait, there's crossover A's. <laughs> well, we're sandwiched by A's. We're sandwiched by A's. I don't know what I'm doing here, eh? <laughs> the, you hoser? It's hard to know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Jordan Peterson, welcome to the podcast. Maybe you should be here, eh? <laughs> Maybe I should, but I can't know it. Can you know anything? <laughs> It's like Jordan Peterson made love to Kermit the Frog. Oh, and he did, <laughs> at least in my head. Jordan Peterson is like Jordan Peterson made love to Kermit the Frog. That's right. <laughs> okay, my point is, th- we still have laws, and you cannot. God established borders. When He gave the Promised Land, He gave a north, a south, an east, and a west border. For all throughout Old Testament, there are borders, and not only were there borders, there were walls. And there are laws that differentiate. And the reason is because the borders protect the sanctity of the gospel. And so if we don't have that, then it's a free-for-all. It becomes tribal. It becomes anarchy, which sounds like you love it. And there is no law. It's a bad definition of anarchy. Fair. That's, it's that's what a, the media uses no, no, that's, to discredit that's us. Fair. But, but, but you can see how if we so went how back... most people think of it, though. If we went back your... to tribal, there would it would be an absence of law. It would be each tribe for himself. And with that, historically, is proven it doesn't work. It just, yeah. But we don't have to... And no, that's fine. I'm Keep not an a, 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 a expert on anarchy. It's like socialism. You're just not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself an anarchist, an anarchist. Yeah. directionally... I, I can like understand on, what you mean. Like right now, we are engaged in an anarchistic relationship. Sure. If Andy wanted us to leave, we would all respect that and we would leave. Correct. Um, and vice versa. I want to be here. When I want to leave, I can just leave. But at the same time, if you wanted to kill his daughter, you couldn't because there's laws that protect that. Right. That's so, why the symbol yeah. of anarchy should be the circle. Not, but you don't go outside the lines. The A is inside the okay. circle. Okay. Order. Okay, I can appreciate your your values. I don't align with that, but but That's we fine. can be friends. Can my, we? My point is, 
we still have to protect borders. And if it's illegal, it's illegal. And so it doesn't change the fact. In fact, if you look at Los Angeles, the moment we stop decriminalizing crime, it caused more problems. And that's one of the major propositions on the ballot was, hey, let's actually make illegality illegal again. Yeah. And so I do, I, I think to say it's illegal, they're all criminals, never let people in is foolish. But I do think we need some reform. I don't know what that is. I don't know what the right answer is. I don't d- disagree with that. To solve. But is there a, does, a, does, it, a, does a law make it good? Not well, Allah. Well, does a law make Allah. it bad? I think does a law make it good? Allah. Allah. Um, <laughs> I think we'd have to ask, does a law make it bad? Because uh, if that's the case... I mean, following the law, because it's law and the state decided, that means it's good and we should follow it. Well, I think that's a great question. I think that when you look at... Where's the, your breaking point? Sometimes. Sometimes. A law is what? Sometimes it makes it good. Not always. And sometimes it makes it bad. I yeah. would I would argue that case with the Roe v. Wade prior to the overturning of that. I think that yeah. abortion is bad. Uh, I think that is the beauty of a democracy or a republic, whatever you want to call us, is that we get to choose that. Um, but when you look at our laws, they are, it doesn't matter what your faith system is, they are built upon biblical values and principles. And so that, to me, is the guiding factor for that. So I, I think that we can have compassion and still say it's illegal to cross the border illegally. And so to vote in a direction that changes the numbers of that and to lead it, I, I don't think the Republicans have done a good job of presenting a good border reform policy. I think that they suck at that. But if you look at politics, there are four major social issues that the Bib- the Bible has real strong values on, and typically the Democrats lean in one direction on two and Republicans on the other two. So then you're going, so if I vote for this party, I'm saying these policies are more important than those, Is it and worth, vice versa. Can, can we list the four? You yeah, know? and I think this, for me to be the expert on this would be wrong, but I think it's going to get close enough, so you could probably interchange some words. But <laughs> It's too bad, man. You're... Uh... <laughs> Amongst experts here. I know, so, I know. Luck. I feel nervous. <laughs> Fact check me, but it would be uh, race, the poor and marginalized. Oh, did I bring my hand down? Everything okay? No, you're good. You're oh. good. Whew. All right. Thought we were being attacked Jeff, or something. you're striking panic. This is like- <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I thought down. I saw everything stop. I was excited about the uh, four- The four. Uh, four pinnacles of okay. this <laughs> race. And I, I don't know if I pushed something. The four horsemen. All right, go for it. Race, the poor and marginalized, which I think we could cl- put the uh, Im- immigrants crossing the border and the poor sure. and marginalized. Abortion and sexuality. And I think it's safe to put gender under the sexuality uh, pillar, if you will. And when it comes to sexuality and abortion, the Republicans tend to be on one side of the biblical perspective. My biblical perspective, not Zach's. And then when it comes to... I'm actually glad you said that. Yeah. Come on, I love you. When it comes to I race... Bet you, I bet you guys are not on different sides on that one. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, he's assuming a lot, but... Yeah. You're assuming I, a lot. You're just, assuming right now. Yeah. That's what I do. That's okay. But it's my I, show. I I'm get to assuming, make an ass. I'm assuming so much. It's true. When it comes to uh, the poor and marginalized and race, the Democratic Party, just over the course of the last 60 years, have done a great job of making that a priority from a biblical perspective, more so. Now, a lot of Christians would would argue, refute that. So, I, like I, the founders of the KKK, would that I, part. Oh, not the part that you're talking more about. Base those, Christians, those Christians, would, they would, those, yeah. Those democratic <clears throat> Christians. Oh, I see what you did there. Um, yeah, and that's where a lot of a lot of that story is a bit. A lot of Christian <laughs> friends that we. Hey, excuse me. That bourbon's great. It's not bad, right? Yeah. It's not bad. How much did it cost? <laughs> Less than thirty dollars. Twelve dollars. Then it's well it's, worth it. Yeah, I know. Especially for old fashions or any mixed drink. That is perfect. perfect. I know. Yeah. I'm so glad you had that. I'm. I've been. Look, I've seen it a hundred times. I'm like, ah, it can't be great. I've opinion changed. Yeah, I'll I'll experiment on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> opinion changed. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's all right. Um, where was I? Uh, the our, four social issues oh, that divide our Democrats parties. Democrats, Christians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Christians I know who are are Democrats and are are pretty sold out for that party. They they will identify like the Democrat Party says more Christian things when it comes to immigrants 
and race and justice. Like they say that the right, they articulate the right things. Now, what you said, you would get pushback because you basically agree with that, that they do a better job. I would say historically what I have seen across the board that I, I believe the democratic party has that is more of a priority to them than yeah, it is to the Republican Party. They'll yeah. align themselves with that as a priority. Yeah, yeah and the Republicans sense. are kind of like s- welfare and, it, you, you know, get a job. So right. the, ch- the charitable, I think the charitable interpretation of that would be uh, Republic- Republicans would say, our goal is to give you a hand up, not a handout. There's, mm-hmm. the, there's the cliche. Yeah. Right, right. Now, the, the, the rub becomes what does the government actually do and are those pol- do those policies actually mm-hmm. bring justice or does it create other sure. problems that w- are unplanned and you can make an argument that like, yeah like it perpetuates it it perpetuates it or at, at the very least it, it can um you can make an argument that without it we have 1929 all over again you have a great depression where 20% 28% unemployment in America with no option for people who are standing in bread lines during the great depression so I think that you can make an argument on both sides of it. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, we can spend $42 billion on putting <laughs> internet in uh, rural America and yet hooking up zero houses for that in the last four years. Gosh, man. Good job. Should we talk about the Wait, uh, electric good, charging stations too? It's Jeez. a good example of if you're if you're depressed right now because of the election. Somebody talking? Oh, Alexa has oh. something to say about that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. The government. <laughs> I mean, the NSA had something to say about that. <laughs> I hope it. I, I know I used to work there. <laughs> I hope that people that feel like they're they're in for a world world of hurt because their team just lost will get activated and join groups that aren't government related because that's where the real stuff, the real work happens. The government top down, it's always more disorganized. It's always more wasteful. Aid groups that that help people out, relief organizations, private organizations almost always do a better job than the government at these types of things. And, and so that's where people can actually put their money where their mouth is and do something and not like, Oh no, we lost. Trump's going to ruin everything. No, get to work, get to work. There's a healthy, it. which is a really healthy response. Like if to anyone on either side, if you like check yourself on how much you are relying on the government to take care of your life, uh-huh. Like, and to do the things that you should be doing. I think Jeff, one or two episodes ago, you had mentioned that historically, through most of history, the church was the source of right. uh, of feeding the poor, hungry. And they were the help. They were they were the help. That's where it came from. And then at some point in history, that changed, and we 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 shifted that over to the government. And yeah, made they were that the, the they, yeah they were the bridge. Yeah, but be, because now welfare is just a handout and nobody needs to have responsibility and they're just going to keep having their handout and not or connection like right there's zero connection there right no community there's no community it's and and so there's that that fundamental shift i think is uh i think one could argue that western civilization capitalism and greed snuffed that out essentially and that's that's the depravity of humanity is there's 247 million Americans who currently, at least on the 2020 census, claim to be Christian. So Catholic, whatever, whatever you want to say. Just don't tell John MacArthur Fair. about the Catholics. Yeah, we won't tell him or the women that are leading. Of the 247 million, they make $5.2 trillion annually, and only 1.5 million are tithing. If all 247 million tithes to the local church, there would be an excess of $139 billion annually. We could take care of the homeless, the widows, the orphans. We wouldn't need a social welfare system. The church could be that. I think you're advocating for the removal of federal income tax, and well, I think that's a great idea, Gary. I think that <laughs> I think the taxes always need to be paid, but I think that God created an ecosystem that works. I think that probably one of the problems with that was also the Reformation. I think some moment. taxes should be paid. Yes. I don't think the amount no, of taxes that no. we pay should be paid. I think the I federal agree. income tax should be abolished. We want roads. We want policemen. I actually think all taxation is theft, but whatever. That's okay. You may no, not be speaking wrong. my language. <laughs> so I do think God created an ecosystem for that. But I also think there is a hierarchy of the social needs that we should care about. And so I do think that abortion I, should be the top. I think we see an abdication of responsibility. And, yeah. and so there is, there's an expectation that someone else will take care of this. 
And I think it happens financially. I think it happens yeah. socially. I think it bleeds in and starts redefining the culture. Yeah. And maybe there's a piece of that of, that you were talking about earlier, which is to say like the foundations of what our country was started on become eroded. They start to erode mm-hmm. and it happens over time. I remember having a conversation in <clears throat> the late 90s. I was in college and one of my friends was like, hey man, <clears throat> According to the way that like, you know, civilizations tend to go, the US probably has a hundred, hundred and fifty years. And I remember being shocked. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, you are crazy. No way. There's no chance. Mm-hmm. Look at this. We're playing ultimate frisbee right now. How could this ever <laughs> end? True story. <laughs> I'm giving you a play by play. That and was the peak that was of it. civilization. <laughs> ultimate frisbee. Frisbee. Have you played Ultimate Frisbee Dude, before, Carrie? It's been a minute. It's Do been you a, know how this I have not experienced real freedom, but it's yeah. been a minute. You I mean, think about nothing else. You know how much scoring those sweet touchdowns. You know how much damage you could do with those calves, man? <laughs> Come <laughs> on. on. Dude. But I remember just like, he said that and I was like, what are you talking about? There's no chance. And then as you get older and as you see and understand society more and you have like, you build up perspective over time. You, you can see, pick pick your dimension. Things were here, and now they're here. And you rarely see it go backwards. It just, it progresses in one direction. And so, and so eventually, that, that will yeah. lead you to the, to, to the end point, which is the what, demise of the where civil- we started. Yeah. yeah, the civilization will eventually collapse. And history has shown us that that happens every single time. Yeah, Eventually, it's very real. And with all those civilizations, almost all of them were preceded by a sexual revolution and a shift in gender ideology. If you even research the yeah, that, Romans, the Greeks, etc. So th- yeah, gender becomes yep. a a real thing, and I don't know what to make of it, that, but it's it's fascinating to me. And it's like whatever you think about how we should handle those issues, like history matters. It doesn't always repeat, but it often rhymes. I don't know who said that, but maybe it repeats sometimes. But that is wild that like every yeah. democracy or whatever, that late stage. Or is every civil- republic, c- every republic, civilization, yeah. every dynasty. Late stage, like mm-hmm. gender is emphasized in a way that's different from and the, sexuality. the tradition, gender and sexuality. Yeah. yeah. That was the main, that was the main, the preceded the fall of the Romans, the... Pardon me. Sleep with whoever you want, whenever you want, without any consequences. And by the by the way, like uh, when we talk about history, it's like there's the Roman Empire, then it ended, and then we almost like we missed the point that no people didn't it didn't just end hard cut off, and then those people didn't exist. It's like it was this gradual process. Mm-hmm. When we look back at it, we see like where the end might have begun, um, but like there didn't stop being Romans and Italians when the Roman Empire ended. It was. It was gradual. So the the idea that America is in late stage democracy, mm-hmm. which it, it might be, um, and maybe America changes the way it is, uh, but it's going to happen over time. All of a sudden, or like over like gradually, then all at once is what I was looking for. Um, and then you, when you look at back on it through enough time in history, you just see these lines drawn like, oh, this is when uh, America ended. But, <clears> like, but like the demise the, becomes logarithmic. But the people didn't mm. end. Like the people, boots on the ground. Yeah, they didn't just all die. It, right. It's like, and they still live their life. They still played Ultimate Frisbee. <laughs> um, just maybe but, with more restrictions. I don't know. It was I a think, different, uh, yeah. I think the sexuality uh, piece has bled down into a very dangerous and devious um part of our culture and that's within our schools and that's become a, uh, you know, it's, it's on the forefront. It's been pushed by some really bad people. I don't know why it was allowed, but I have seen over the last few days, uh, Donald Trump speaking to that and that federal funds will be cut off. If you're pushing that a boy's a girl or girl's a boy and I'm like, in California, that will hurt. And that will, and like the and tampon should. machines are going to come off walls. It should and, hurt. You know, it's just, I mean, it's an awful thing that's happened. It's, it's really messed with, with kids' minds and having counselors come in and talk to them about just ridiculously horrible stuff 
that's almost pornographic. And I'm just like, none of this should be in the ears of of kids, and it's got to stop. And it's like, it's such a huge Titanic. And it's like, it literally does take a hero, if you want to say that's Trump, to come in and say, this ends today, then that's phenomenal, especially in the education uh, of kids across the country mm-hmm. when reading, writing, arithmetic is supposed to be uh, the only thing, and it's become something other than that. In fact, it's almost excluded the academic part of it, and it's completely driven, especially at the high school level, um, of of sexuality and gender and pronouns, and it's just out of control. I would agree. I think that it it does need to be a conversation piece that that it has a space for that. I think that the problem is that at least in California, it's become almost totalitarian in the fact that they're removing the rights from the parents. So we, we can't, we have to, we have to, again, to bifurcate, like we've got to have compassion and also go, wait, what is right and, and wrong? If I can't remember if we talked about this with me being on here. So I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but in the state of California, if you take your child who's not, who's under the age of 18 to get a tattoo and you give them written consent, right? you can be fine. The tattoo artist will be fine and lose his license because it's permanent irre- irre- irreversible damage. Hopefully you didn't spill that. Are you no. okay, Jeff? I'm good. Are you okay? All good? Was, was that lot? the enemy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Spiritual warfare. <Those> Democrats. <laughs> It's Anyways, I, I think that the b- bottom line is they they won't allow a tattoo artists to prov- to give a, a minor a tattoo, but they'll right now AB nineteen fifty five they can take a kid and get him on hormone blockers. Well, I right. think that's fine for a conversation with a parent, but that should not be a guidance counselor or a teacher with a child and to be able to remove the authority of the parent by not telling them, and then they're legally protected now by the state. They there there's insurance that covers any lawsuit against them. That's the problem. We, but we still need to have compassion for people who struggle with sexuality, struggle with gender issues, because that's a real thing. But we're, when, we, when we allow the, the government overstepped its lane, it, it came into the, there's, there's three forms of government, the church, the family, and, and, and then the, the government. And, and the government, the national government or state government stepped into the lane of the family, and that has no business being there. And that to me is, a, I believe, problematic. Yeah, and we're we're in an especially uh, tricky state when it comes to that. There's lots of other places that that don't deal with it to the degree that we do. Yeah, yeah. I just wish the conversation was more nuanced. Where it's hold on, keep going. I told you two things. That's right. Yeah. Is that it? We're done. No, 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 no. Take your headphones off. It's the music is playing. The, nobody's going to hear this except for us right now. Oh. Um. But I was like, that was the music. We're cute. It's over. Sorry. But Andy. the conversation is like so all or nothing, and nobody wants to see ground. I, and I think where the right really misses the point is like, there, whether it's some sort of social contagion or if it's just more people are aware of the gender issues and struggles. And so more people feel safe to come out. What, whichever one is the case, Republicans like, the kids stuff, like y- you got to have the conversation and, 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 uh, build support networks for kids that are having confusion. It's, it's worth looking into seeing like where the, if there, if manipulation is happening, if you look at this charted over a- annually during COVID, the spike that occurred is, is unprecedented for the, re- no, for the rest of history. Right. And so clearly like, you have in some states, just period. Yeah, but not like in Texas, in Florida. It, the spikes were in Washington, Oregon, California, New York, Illinois. So very specific states, which tells you even more about it. But keep going. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm willing to bet that if you took the spike, might not be the same, but I'd be willing to bet that it is still a spike. In sure r- in relation to sure. what historically yeah, yeah. you've fair, seen, fair. so you have this massive uptick that occurs an outlier during that, yeah, and it's totally an outlier. And so, if you rewind and you look at well, what was going on then? People were obviously like a time of unrest and concern and high stress and isolation. And then at that time, there's everyone stays deeply connected to their 
devices and now you are this becomes your world and now you begin to shape your world because your interactions with other people who may disagree with you get severely limited right and and so so the echo chambers just start spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and so that's that's kind of so i was going for something a little bit different i don't disagree like um the number of people that the number of young people that identify as like non-binary or something other than sure, just like sure. standard male Cisgender female whatever, cis, yeah. yeah um has far outpaced even if you incorporate like it's just safer to identify as non-binary like the number of kids it's way higher like mm-hmm. there's something going on that's just suicidal tendencies in teenage mm-hmm. girls but regardless like if your kid comes to you and and talks about it saying Oh, it's just social contagion. That's not actually happened to you. That's not going to cut it for your for your kid, or or if you're counseling a family that has a kid struggling with sure. this stuff, like for that individual, it's a very real thing. And I think the right side could do way better at and just like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna walk with you. We're gonna give you resources to to just just maintain because it, it it may be something when hormones are fi- firing through adolescence, it's. It's com- everyone goes through confusion and awkwardness and sure. a version of like, who am I? Like, and well, and, yeah, and the regular- and I think the right side drops a ball on that because we're fighting mm-hmm. a culture war and because the left side, the extreme left portion of this argument, it, it is very extreme. Most people aren't that. Um, we don't want to cede any ground and even acknowledge that there is an issue happening. And I think that. People could be, we could be better about that. Christians could be better about, about that as, as opposed to just saying like, well, there's right and wrong and you should just do the right thing and not the wrong sure. thing. Do you think there can be a delineation though? I, I don't, I don't disagree with you at all. We, even at our church, we're very strong about our stance on, we have, we hold to a historical Christian orthodoxy when it comes to sexual ethics. And we believe there's only two genders, male and female. Uh, but we also understand people struggle with sexuality and struggle with gender dysphoria and struggle or sure. whether it's gender dysphoria or not, just a choice doesn't matter. Right. So you, all are welcome. Um, I, yeah. For the size of our church, we have a pretty large population of, you know, gay, lesbian, the, the LGBTQ com- community, married, straight, whatever. Um, but not wavering what we believe. Don't you feel like you, that we can we can have compassion, but there also is a time that we need to educate people on how to have conversations and have compassion while also making sure we're protecting the innocence of our children by 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 in other words, laws that are passed and and propositions that are passed that take the that away from the family, oh yeah is a problem. And, and I think that's the church's role. And I think the church has sucked at this and still so many and suck parents, at it. Have, parents have sucked at it. Cause they well, didn't know. And churches I think are afraid and conflate acceptance with affirmation. It's so true. Like th- those two, uh, and, and have been pressured into that as sure. well and have crumbled under the pressure of the, yeah, those are both evil words in the church right now. Acceptance and affirmation. There's, Cause it's like, how do you, what do you do? If I, if I love you and you love someone's the same gender, I'm now affirming what you're doing. So I can't love you. It's a weird dynamic. And they shouldn't be conflated. And that's, Correct. that's the problem, right? Correct. So it's like acceptance, wherever you land, I want you to be here because I think this is the best place for you and, yeah. and, and people will love you. It doesn't mean that they agree with everything that you are doing or believe. And, and like, Again, this comes to, and you're probably right. There, there I'm. I don't think it's. <laughs> Did that come through? It yeah. came through. It came through. It's not. It's not out of the realm of possibility that there is a spiritual component to the uh, to the to the disunity that's occurring. I'm sorry. I'm listening. Keep yeah. Going. No. It's not. It's not out of the realm of possibility that we have uh, this level of disunity has a spiritual component to it. And I, th- I think it goes. I I don't disagree with that. I think it goes in both directions where some Christians recognize the way the church has hurt sexual minorities in the mm-hmm. past, but also they're afraid they're afraid to do the like, hey, you're welcome thing 
because they're afraid it's going to look like acceptance. And so they don't do it at all, or they, they do more harm than good by, or they don't know what they believe. And, and I think a lot of churches don't yeah. because a lot of churches, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not. Sure. What are you looking at the time? No. I had a killer abortion question Go that for I wanted it. to get to. Can we get to it? That's but redundant, I, but... I, I believe oh that you can be gosh. born gay, <laughs> and I think a lot of Christians struggle with that. I was born happy. <laughs> no, I believe you can be born with the same sex Dude, attraction. That is that is exceptional boomerism. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, that joke. You, you the are, wait, what year were you born? I'm with you. I've made that joke before, Jeff. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at my face like that, Jeff. What year were you born, Jeff? 68? I think Jeff is 70? Gen X, right? 72. Oh, yeah, you're Gen X for sure. 65 to 74 Gen X. Uh, uh, got, that's not actually not mm, true. That is true. That is not yeah, true. I can't wait to fact check it. Just shoot this me a text and be like, I'm sorry. This is what we fight over was, right now. I was, like, <laughs> I was born in 78, and that's where Gen X goes to. No, it's 65 to 74. 75 you want, to you put, 95 is millennial. Do you want to put... This, Let's put fifty dollars on it. Did you say yeah. 75? 75 94 is millennial ninety five to uh, two thousand? Uh, yeah, I'll put, you're, you're, you're wrong. wrong. I'll put fifty dollars on it. How about let's go? This. Can he we fire a guest? You're fired. You're fired, Gary. You have to buy the next twenty dollar bottle of <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <Kirkland. laughs> yeah, you it's a ten, be sorry. ten year window. You're not, you're not right. Ten year window for Gen Xers. That's why they're called Gen X. But we, this is not <laughs> what this is about. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's because there was a weird window uh, of a large birth of people and generationally what how they use to define generations and how now. How did Gen Z work? Is by How many is Z worth? They're still there's they're they're is that they're, 12? They're 90, uh, see, 95 the millennials a thousand two more? 2015. So. I love you, dude. You yeah. couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> okay. Cool. I don't mind coming back on and we'll talk about it. But <laughs> I, I don't mind. <laughs> None of us have internet right now, which is kind of glorious. No, no, I, I don't oh, you mind. You do have coming. internet. You can check it. I, I don't mind. Coming. If you, if I this is what this is about, I'm, I don't mind. I can. I, I'm now, promise. I'll bring you a book on the subject that will will substantiate what I'm saying, and your mind will be blown about the correlation of of ages. But I'll bring you the book. I love. Look, you come go- back, and we'll talk about who really is the greatest generation. <laughs> I I think they're all great. Anyways, oh okay. Gosh. The qualifier for millennials is that they remember where they were when 9/11 happened. That's the qualifier. It's always negative, some kind of crazy challenging thing that took place. Gen X is the challenger explosion. So it's a negative default defining qualitative thing for generations that solidify that. The challenger explosion was 87. Yeah, they're old enough to remember. Oh, okay, I got yeah. you. So uh, anyways, I do remember. That is arbitrary. Good God, man. I remember my mom bawling. I'm like, what's wrong? Yeah, exactly. And I just go, go back, go to that TV. Okay, so but that's not what we're going to talk about. Kirk Gibson's home run in 88. I, I, I feel like we can come back here and we'll, with this and you're going to have resources and I'm going to have resources. They're both going to say what we want to substantiate that. See, that's but right, I'll still buy the bottle. You don't, I'll need, still a, buy you the don't bottle. need a book to figure that. I like that you have to go to the you library to tell me. <laughs> uh, it's a great book. I'll give it to you. You'll love it. Oh, that right. reminds me of my, one of my favorite quotes. I think it's Mark Twain. Uh, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. Yes, that's exactly right. Where it's like you can you can, you make, can make a number, make say yeah. whatever you want. Uh, yeah. We were talking about sexuality. Yeah, and but I, I know question. we, we got to get to listener feedback in a minute because we're at like an hour and a half right you now. You guys do this yeah. every time I'm on here. You, I know. Nobody's like... But I had... You brought up abortion. It's very good. clear. It's it's very important to you. Let's do it. Top of your list. Top of the list. Uh, 100%. Probably top of most of our lists. Um, I am pro-life, abortion-wise. Um, although I have like questions. I have like nuanced questions I like to get to. That's a shock. Um but this isn't one of them. This is a new one that I thought of based on real life data. Would you vote? Would have you, would you have voted for Kamala if it was guaranteed that abortions would go down? No. Okay. Because what about you guys by how much I know the statistics on he's a, this is a bait by the way. Oh, I know. <laughs> I think it's an interesting thought experiment. It, it's on, I know, by how much? It's on perception. I, I don't have, I don't know. I mean, if it goes down by five, no. Okay. Five, five actual abortions? Yeah. Or 5%? Both of those. I don't know how many abortions are performed on average. But but the, the thing... Uh, is You're 1. trying to get to our, a, a are, year. We a, uh, are we a single um, well, single? I had... I, would I... Ch- Bring it. Would I vote for Harris if... If like you I, knew abortions would go down by, let's say, 20%. Okay, the okay, the reason I didn't vote for Harris is because I knew the Democrats 
knew that she's a horrible candidate and a terrible person. It's a different question. And and Trump was kind of different question. But way I, better. So okay. abortions have nothing to do with. I know he's got Kamala a hypothetical. Harris. It's just based on real world data, though. I mean, after Roe, abortions went up. Before Roe was was okay, uh, taken I, away. I like your question. Let's go back to your question though. Re-ask Jeff your question. Okay, I'm going to put it 20%. Abortions go down 20%. If Harris gets elected, would you vote for? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Same for you guys? Yeah, 20%? I can't. I'm not. I know her stance on, on abortions, so I can't. Right. No, he's a, he's give, the hypothetical is that's what it happens. It doesn't matter though. her stance. It doesn't matter. This is what, this is, he's. Yeah, yeah, I know. He tells you the future. Here's the future. Yeah, yeah, I can't because it's still legal. Yeah, which is, which is, but that's no different from Trump, by the way. Well, the difference is Trump's giving it back to the states. He that already happened. That's in the past. Yeah, now. I'm with you. I'm with you. But I think it's worth considering. Coming across more argumentative than I want. I, to. No, I appreciate it. I'm here for it. I think it. It's go, it goes beyond just abortion. But oftentimes, like how we react to, to elections is like, oh, we got the law passed we wanted. Meanwhile, there's other. You can't. Unless you'd really crack down, you can't really legislate morality Correct. in a way that would satisfy Everyone. super conservative people. The people that are most concerned with like laws that enforce traditional norms, you can't do that by law. That has to happen culturally, naturally, unless you're going to have a full authoritarian system. Not really. Not where, really. That's that. I mean, you're leaving out theft and murder, like big, gigantic, yeah. massive areas of morality. So... I don't think I'd agree with you on that. Cheating, stealing, those are pretty big ones. Yeah, fraud. Like It's really yeah. cool that we've uh, that murder doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> but because doesn't we've mean outlawed you, it. doesn't mean you can't that's a different argument. But if that's we That's exactly you, the argument I'm making. Like none of us are going to go and murder because that murder's now people don't Okay, the data suggests slight tangent. The data suggests that people don't not commit murder because they're because of the rules. They commit it if they think they're not going to get caught. The consequences. Yeah, the consequence. Life in prison, death penalty doesn't matter. It's whether you think you're going to get caught or not. Then but why the, then but, why have but any the fear of getting severity, caught? I'm not you're why going way lost? the other way. But no no that's, it's that's getting good. But follow the line of your logic then. If if the consequences don't impact anyone's decisions, then why have right. any then why have any laws or any consequences? They do. That's the thing. They, they, they do have an impact. Mm -hmm. They do stop I, you from doing I'm not saying things. they don't have an impact. But what I am saying is sometimes for, for, for everyone looking for the state to, to fix things, it's like a dog catching the car. Like, let me catch the car, catch the car, catch the car, catch the car. Once you catch the car, it's like, what the fuck do I do? And so you, you do shit that has bad consequences or maybe the consequences are different. Um, but that wasn't my point to bring it up. My point was just, was mostly like perception. Like the perception is that for people that love Trump or maybe don't love Trump, but are glad he won. Oh, like we did this thing. Phew. Problem solved. Problem solved. Already right. you feel better about the country, even though nothing has happened. Um, right. When, when Trump got elected, like, so abortion was dropping in every administration since Carter until Trump. I don't know what the reason for that. I'm not going to blame Trump for that. I need to see, to see that statistic. Assume it's true. Because okay. It is. Okay. Because okay. It is. I, I also heard sake, this too. For the sake of argument, um, I'm not blaming that on Trump. I'm not saying Trump is increasing abortions, but for whatever reason that happened, conservatives feel better about Trump being in, regardless of the data. You can a, a okay, one. I could be wrong. This this could be one example where the change takes a while to take correct. effect. But also be because it was simply moving it to states and states didn't all enact a change immediately. There's no, also nuance that. to that statistic. I've heard that statistic before. Before, before, before what? Before Roe was overturned. Yeah, 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 Roe yeah. was overturned after Correct. Trump was in It was his with first Biden's term. administration. And wait, wait, finish the thought that Roe was overturned. It, it went what? up during Trump's turn before Roe was overturned. And it has gone up since Roe was overturned. Re regardless of the reason, uh, the left, the left uh, version that comes to mind is if you really care about the environment and you want to stop drilling... The rhetoric by the Biden administration was very environmentally friendly. We're, we're going to take care of the environment. We're going to limit drilling. We're going to tamp that down. 
They drilled more under Biden than under Trump. And so oftentimes, like what somebody says they're going to do is sometimes the direct opposite of what they actually do. And sometimes they might want to do it, but the consequences are different. And I don't pretend to have an answer on why that's the case, but I just think... I don't disagree with any of the seven points you've just made. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, but I think that the the statistic you're talking about, that abortions go up... I think there I've re- researched this a little bit and I believe where they spike is in major cities where it's legal because people coming from other states where it's illegal cross borders and that's why they see spikes also the Roe v Wade but overturning But they would have an abortion anyway. It doesn't matter. It's a spike because they're going from a, a smaller st- state to a major metropolitan city. I'll do some research and come back with that, but I've had this conversation before. And the same with the Roe v. Roe v. Wade overturning, nothing could be in place until this election. And every state voted and passed the abortion, current abortion laws, except for Florida. Florida is the only one that overturned that. Yeah. So you wouldn't, there, there yeah, could that was, be nothing that, that could have changed. That's my point. Like, you're, you're not going to see that. That, that one right. will take, it'll take time for you to see the effects of it. Yeah. I, I, I can tell I you th- this. I th- go ahead. No, no, it's okay. I'll go. You go ahead. If it's illegal to get an abortion, the numbers are going to drop substantially. Correct. There still will be abortions. Can you? Can you envision? Drop can you envision consequences outside of abortion that are bad that come to hold over that kind of government control of what people do with their body? Well, I feel like that. I feel like that is a misnomer because I have a moral quandary with the fact that we are saying. What I do with my body is more important than the sanctity of life within my body. So I cannot, I cannot disconnect those two. So this is the problem of the world that we live in where you can have sex with whoever you want to, whenever you want to, without any consequences. So now let's, let's make abortions legal so that it's easier to do so. So I, I can't separate those two my hope and prayer would be that we got to that place. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Yeah. To reverse that would be, holy cow. It'd and be I, two different in the United and States. And I don't know. I, I would like, I would like to see, um, life be protected and, and emphasized. I just know like sometimes it's the, the best way to do it is to actually like, we, we need, we need better support systems that people that get pregnant that don't have True. the resources. Like there's, there's a million ways we could be holistically pro-life. Sure. And also some of the reaction to, to the leftward swings are rightward swings where, where if you like you have a late tor- term pregnancy that has a problem and there's no medical exception for that. It's like, like I'm a husband. Would I, I would hate to have to make that choice, but it's a minority case and the law is mostly for minority cases. Uh, do I choose, okay, this, this baby is going to kill my wife. Like that choice is a real choice for some people. That's the one where I could go, I can see an exception yeah. for that instance, but even Megan and I have talked about it. We're not in it, but we would right. be like, okay, let's see what happens. But I, that's easy yeah. to say when you're not in it. True. Anyways, um, I think it's a great question. Maybe maybe it wasn't a great tangent, but I thought I thought of it when you brought up abortion because I know it's 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 important to you and yeah. Um. Anyways, I think it's important to Jesus, Zach. I think all life is important to Jesus. It is. Oh, is that your all lives matter? <laughs> is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, racist. <laughs> Even some of the immigrants right now that might get flushed out of the system. What does it say at the Statue of Liberty? Bring Adios. us your tired. You know. E pluribus unum. You know, teacher. That's a misnomer. That's a that doesn't Bring us work. Your tired. <laughs> that oh. doesn't work. That's like me putting a welcome mat on my front porch and it says welcome, and that means that if you want to come in without my permission, it's okay. So no, that, I'm I'm with you. I'm 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 with you. I'm not saying open borders, but I am saying there's a lot of people here. And there's potential mass destruction that goes beyond just personal, like the individual people that will get kicked out that would have consequences that would be damaging. So, I, And there's no doubt about that. And I do. And that's why I would be like, hey, 
just because Trump Trump got that mandate, like especially for Christians, I wasn't talking about the New Testament of like, oh, it's spiritually you're spiritually grafted in. It's a it's a eternal designation. I'm like, there's before that was in place, all throughout the Old Testament is like you can find passages that are like, hey, you were once foreigners. Mm-hmm. So be good to people that are here, that are strangers, that mm-hmm. are immigrants, that don't belong here. There are laws that are set up to that for that too, that I think it's convenient to ignore as a Christian. So, and that, I'm not saying it's tough. I'm not an open, open borders guy. It's not either or. Both parties don't want to fix the problem because both parties want to keep the problem so that they can scare the shit out of their power. constituents. Agreed. And maintain power. Yeah, we're going to use the open border to sway conservatives to vote for us. And we're going to use compassion to let it hurt, helping our, AOC our fellow AOC is going to cry in yeah, front of kids yeah. in cages and then not do anything about it. I don't think politicians actually care about the people that uh, are on yeah. the south for, of the border. For the most, more, most part, that's true. And that's why it's going to be the people in front of you and the, like, Listen, jo- you join guys, up with... <laughs> illegal immigrants barely know about insider trading. <laughs> why would anyone in Congress be interested in what they have to say? Okay? And most of them don't know about this podcast. <laughs> no, that is true. But that's about to change. Oh, gentlemen, this has been a great discussion. Carrie, love having you on. Every can time. I get a couple me. feedbacks? Yeah, let's get some feedback. Back. This has been longer than and usual, but people can stop listening whenever they want to okay. because they're free. They By the listen. way, guess who subscribed to us? Who? Augustine. Hmm. The actual Saint Augustine, Saint Augustine subscribe to us on YouTube. So Whoa. you have no excuse. I'm calling Individual, Augustine. subscribe, like, subscribe, mash, smash. His name is Augustine, but that's okay. Keep going. Yeah. Potato, potato. <laughs> you know, literally before I said the word, I'm like, wait, which one is going to throw it's Carrie? It's been debated since like, he died. Everyone, like the it's smartest been, people I yeah. know say both. Yeah. Uh, Dave Millsap. I say Augustine. Oh, we do have I a like Augustine. I'm going to start saying as saint augustine always said uh, you know saint augustine i'm gonna start saying that he wants he talked about his we struggle. got a voicemail oh we got a voicemail Ooh. oh i love it hit hit us with the voicemail speakpipe.com slash bros or bros bibles beer rub your neighbor as you rub yourself <laughs> <laughs> what did it say at the end there rub your neighbor <laughs> you gonna do it again don't rub say. your neighbor as you rub yourself. <laughs> that's all. That's all. Is that from uh, our last episode? That's uh, yeah, that's Quaid. It's where I quote. Qu- I, I heard it. I heard I it. I coined the phrase. Oh, rub your neighbor. But you said <laughs> rub your neighbor, and said, then and he just neighbor. like he put as the, you rub, as you rub yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Quaid. I mean, it's probably accurate. Oh, <laughs> uh, Quaid's like I can't believe my sh- shower isn't pregnant. <laughs> Gross. Oh oh, oh, oh. Uh, sorry, mom. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> I'm we, sorry, mom. We do have a we have a big announcement to make. Do we? Oh. We, we have a past OG. Oh, yes. Host. Yes. Scott Founder. What? Scooter Scott Holbert. Holbert. Sh- should we move to what? Montana? Should we l- have him on an episode to announce it though? Maybe we should just tease this. Okay, no, Scott is not that? coming on the podcast. Oh. He has prostate cancer. Everyone, oh, what is God. happening? That's the not true. The roller coaster of emotions. Oh my gosh, that is not true. Scott Scooter Holbert, it's the next best thing. Andy, left and Andy went. might be right. Like, how about next oh Tuesday? We should tease this. Oh my gosh, it's huge Big news. Big news. Original bro Scott Holbert. <laughs> Big moved news. Away. It's big. It's. It's as big as it gets. All it's right. huge. Thank you for bringing that up, Jeff. Are you editing this? No. Oh. I mean, yeah, but no. And then we're not editing. I, don't sh- I want to know what actually is happening because I don't know what's we'll happening. We'll tell you after. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Dave Millsap, 647. These are all YouTube comments. Uh, Josh Howerton's Pat, you're in passive rebellion against God yeah. if you don't vote for one of the two major, par- major parties. So yeah. I'm in passive rebellion. Uh Dave Millsap, passive rebellion against God. So which Christian candidate, in air quotes, should Christians vote for when all of them claim to be Christian? He's spouting idiocy from the pulpit. <laughs> now, I will say he made a couple of really long comments where it's it's very clear he cares deeply about yeah. who, who you might want to vote yeah. for. But he just d- disagreed with the uh, Howerton take. Howerton didn't tell you to vote for a Christian candidate, by the way. 
He strongly implied it. Well, he strongly implied who he thought was Different. a Christian. No, no, but he didn't say vote for a Christian Do you candidate. want me to get Howard in on this podcast? Can you? Do you know him? Probably. Oh, it'd be fun. We'd like to talk to him about that apology. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey That was... Hey, that's a smart move. Too soon? No, I think it's a smart move. If you've ever run an organization that in the... Plagiarism is a Just smart no, move? No, 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 no. Anytime you are making a public apology and there's a potential of a lawsuit on the backside, you better do it right. And so, so that's the time to, one. Did that do it? That's the copy time and to paste. Be. Just copy. Yeah. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. All right. Um, Michael Hannigan. We'd love to have him on. <laughs> okay. On Voting Like Jesus. And we hey, won't. Hey, folks. Sabotage him. Hey, folks. Satan tempted Jesus with all the kings, um, kingdoms of this world, of the world. But Jesus took them all from Satan at the cross. John 12, 31. Jesus is king. We are called to elect those who recognize his kingship or will best govern under the kingship of Christ. I get a million things to say about that, but never mind. <laughs> Accidental finder on men in church. Uh, Wait, why, why ac- Accidental finder. What's that mean? Accidental finder is the, the new person. dating app. Oh, that's their name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Who that's is good. this person? Uh, on, oh, why? Me- <laughs> I guess we're going to go out on a date. All right. I happen to find you. I sure hope he likes me. We I sure hope like he's the, a him. We're all the deans. <laughs> Hugh Hauser. Hugh, it's a mixture between Dean, <laughs> yeah. Dean, Hootie and Hugh Hauser. <laughs> what is this? It looks like your breast. Wow. Does he have an Adam's apple or not? <laughs> You'll never know. I keep finding things accidentally. <laughs> uh, My hands are wandering. <laughs> This it's is, all random. This is the real California's gold right here in her pants. <laughs> it's like the prospector just showed up from Toy Story. That is Hugh Hauser. He is part prospector. <laughs> okay. Our, our or will best govern un, under the kingship of Christ. Okay. Oh, yeah. Accidental finder. Sorry. <laughs> I recently attended several churches after 10 year hiatus and noticed a lot of young men and middle aged women were in attendance. But the church is very feminized now. It's much more feminine than I wa- than mm. it was mm. just a few years ago. Everything is about feelings and empathy now. That was our episode on why men are outpacing women in church attendance. Young, oh, yeah. young men. Young men. And finally, Resurgence. commenting Good. on the Art and Brenda episode. I'll let you read that last one. From... Creator Kathy, Creator Kathy, Creator Kathy 6110. That's her name. I enjoyed listening to your interactions with this wonderful couple. Their lives and marriage reflect two individuals who have been sincere in their walk with the Lord Jesus over many years. They prove that a godly marriage can not only be fulfilling, but also downright fun. They are quite an inspiration. As a mother, I appreciate their good influence, even on you boys. Oh, I don't think I heard the F-bomb once during this broadcast. Whose mom is that? It's my mom. They say Crater. Oh, is that what I said? Oh, Kathy. Oh. She That's listens. wonderful. She's you know re- what? She's not wrong, by the way. Art and Brenda are... Legends. Oh, they are legends and some of the best influences on us. Yeah. And I hope <laughs> my... I used a couple of words today, but... May it never be to tear any individual down. It's only for emphasis. And that's my justification. Oh, but also, Kathy, sorry, Mom. You just, did a good job with your son. He just does He's it a for great clicks man. and views. Yes, sir, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Uh, this has been outstanding. I love it. I love each one of you guys, too. And send us more feedback because obviously... Actually, we didn't mention, we, wrote, we reached out to a couple of friends yes. that are different political persuasions yep. that just weren't ready to have a conversation in this format, which is justifiable. Yeah. Um, and eventually, so obviously we have deep blind spots for some of our perspectives. And so if you could send us, you feedback, do. Yeah. It's just <laughs> me. Just me. I it's got glass. just getting I get, good. Let's keep this I got glasses going. for my blind spots. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But send the feedback. There were a couple of feedbacks Feedback. that were like, this Jeff, is you're lies. Fi- Jeff, you're fired. Zach's talking. Wrong camera. <laughs> this, this is how we're ending the show. What did they say were lies? No context. Like, oh. send us a good feedback. Yeah, yeah. It's, wor- it's worth just going to our page to look for Dave Millsap's comments because his longest ones we leave out because they are very long and very articulate. So, do we know Dave, Dave Millsap? Millsap? Yeah, old friend. Oh, okay. But he comments every time and it's always like really thoughtful. 
I read a couple of the shorter ones. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this episode of Bros, Bibles, and Beer. <clears throat> you don't know what to do with your hands. Uh, for Zach, Jeff, Carrie, I am Andy, Grace. Peace. Cheers. 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 Bibles and beer. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, Bibles and beer. Bibles.